Mr. President and uh, members. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. And uh, this is just an overall. I mean, just I thought, since it's uh, general practitioners and uh, overall everybody is involved, so I didn't want to go into any specific topic. And so quickly we'll go through just what is, how did the orthopedic start? Basically, it also started like our own country. The bone centers started in England. And one of them out of that uh, became a surgeon and uh, he started this as a separate, uh, he came from the traditional bone centers and uh, Hugh Thomas was the father of orthopedics, followed by his nephew who made it uh, orthopedic as a separate department and specialty. And then we had uh, better uh, because of the modern anesthesia and uh, antiseptic with uh, antibiotics and things. So it grew much faster and uh, with the modern theater we could do more because more vulnerable in bones is if there is an uh, infection happens it's very difficult to uh, correct it because the antibiotics cannot reach into the bone. I mean the soft tissues it can but the bone it takes longer and difficult to get it out. So we try to only worry about the infection rather than anything else and uh, so when we have these kind of good uh, now laminar flow and where the fresh air comes out and the dirty air goes out and there is circulation. And in olden days when there was a operation was going on, it was done with the middle and the rest of the students and others used to watch from there. But now they are all separated so nobody walks in and this was what happening very uh, in the beginning when we were uh, started our career in the 1980s as uh, assistant when we went, that time any joint replacement we used to use a Chandler tent and space suit. So this was a compulsory for us. We have to have the oxygen through the space suit and so they thought they could control the infection by that. But it's not really that it matter. Now we know that it really is not that what matters. It's more so is the laminar flow and better theater facilities and cleaner air and they keep us, I mean we have the, all the filters and that has made it easier and no need to go through all this, you know, because by the time you start the surgery, it will take almost an hour, hour and a half. So it was so difficult those days in 1980s. Then it is now changed to modern day. And so this, this is an interesting topic, you know. And in orthopedics, what made the difference is the Swedish registry, where they started all together, all the orthopedic surgeons sat together. We thought we should really classify every uh, fracture, every surgery and everything was all made into association of orthopedics and they did all that move and it is now become AO, we call it very fair, you would have heard of AO, synthesis and all those things. That is the basics of that. Now we have much more newer uh, implants now, you know, we have uh, titanium and uh, all pre-bent anatomical plates. So there's a lot of changes from what we started, even I have seen in the last 40 years, when I started in 1979, when we started first orthopedics in England, that time we had all major, you know, just to compress a fracture, we used to have a big machine, we used to put on top of the thin plate and then compress it. Now with a, just a simple oblique, um, you know, making the whole oblique and off-centering of the pit that compresses the whole thing. It's so simple. I mean, it's just the engineers. A lot of people kept doing that. So there are a lot of changes have happened now. From what we started and today, then and the maximum, I could say, um, development has happened is in orthopedics really. And uh, we can see that this specialty is growing and it's going to do even better now with the stem cell and other things. We'll come to that later on. Now the special implants are also for osteoporosis. When there is a severe osteoporosis, even if you put a plate, it will all fall in place because it's like putting a screw on an egg shape. Everything will fall. But now we have plates which are locking plates, anatomical locking plates with the screws. So the screw goes on the bone as well as that screw head goes and locks on the plate. So it doesn't fail. So there's no pull out, no problem. So that is why we can operate in any kind of osteoporosis. Any osteoporotic patient, even 18, 90, if they are basically fit for anesthesia, then they don't have to go through all that uh, extra traction and uh, 
you know, putting a plaster and all those. That's very, very uncomfortable. When you see this, you know, operate, you operate on somebody, same evening they walk, after a couple of days they go home, then the uh, confidence in life is changes. Because it's not just the surgery, it is more of getting the patient to get that uh, feeling that they will get better and go. Otherwise they give up, you know. So the, with these modern uh, implants, we are able to do that. Now new metals have also longevity of the artificial joints. So we have joints from, we started with stainless steel, then we went into, you know, uh, this nickel and uh, added uh, less amount of nickel and then we went into, you know, this titanium. Now we got oxenium and other things. So those things last even 50, 60 years. So when we give now joint replacement, when we do joint replacement, we can always say that if it is done all right, it can even last up to 50, 60 years. And with the minimal invasive, the speedy recovery and less painful. And uh, <clears throat> different uh, specialities joined together, we can do better things like vascular surgeon, plastic surgeon, we do a lot of trauma work now. And body trauma and other things are easily taken off. And also avoiding secondary trauma and shifting the injured patient is very important in uh, major accidents, which we know in the uh, first day. Now, <clears throat> since, uh, as we said, reduce the infection, and the instruments are better and uh, also the operating, the operating time is faster and the newer anesthetic technique and uh, because it is uh, being um, uh, basically it is a group of all the doctors are involved so we have a better results with that. Now what is the, our modern orthopedic is not just, just uh, you know joint a fracture and is all right to go but we try to attack the normal activities like we can go back to the normal lifestyle and get rid of the deformity and get the movement back and we try to achieve 100% results because there is no point just getting the bone to heal which will anyway heal. It is, a, it is nature to heal but we have to get the full movement that is more important. So we go into the next one. Now just few cases to just to show what we can do now is if you can see this uh, very majorly wrong and it is involved a uh, uh, numerous distal numerous with complete fracture of everything I mean uh, the uh, the numerous uh, the both medial and lateral column is gone which is now because of this kind of plates available anatomy plates and tension band wiring and things. So what we do is immediately after the fractures, next day morning, we start to mobilize. So when you mobilize, they get full movement. Otherwise, earlier days, it will join, but you will not have any movement at all. Either the elbow will be stuck in straight or slightly fixed. There won't be movement. That's a blue use rate. I mean, if you don't get So we do try to achieve 100% results. That is our aim. That is what is modern orthopedics is all about. See, here's this boy. Even though he had such a bad fracture, you can see he is back to normal. There is no problem. And similarly, even in a thing like this, earlier they would just amputate, you know, because we don't want to go with multiple procedures and all. But now with the other um, departments, we are able to just fix it, then put external fixators, then put a rod, and then get back the patient with the other, uh, you know, plastic surgeons and vascular surgeons and you can save the name. Similarly, this kind of a fracture where this joint is completely gone and that large fragment has come out and cut the popliteal vessels but still here we can do dual plating, get this movement back and this patient has got full range of movement. I mean, there is not even a deformity you can make out. But these things are not possible without our proper plating and, uh, you know, the later uh, now development what we have these kind of anatomical plates and so we can achieve all these kind of difficult cases also or in multiple trauma you know the old man he is the 70 plus he was run over by a I mean I think a speeding vehicle four wheeler and he has had you know both sides fractures people it's a segmental fracture that itself shows it must be a high velocity fracture and that is all treated with the navy and uh, all the plates and things and the patient is back to normal even at this age they recover fully similarly
for patients with the difficult fractures of any part can be fixed now, as I told you, because of the modern things. Now, uh, coming to the bit of the trauma, now coming to the orthopedics, the commonest we can touch is the joint replacements, which is what is now latest happening. Here, even there is no question of any age group restriction. We know it even at the youngest age, maybe 20 year old lady or any age we can do it. And we do whether unsymmetered or symmetric, well, if they even have a fixed flexion deformity, we release everything and get back to the patient and she is able to walk, mobilize immediately. You can see this lady, she she is only 19 year old girl, we had a fixed hip deformity, fixed uh, knee as well as completely all the juvenile arthritis are very bad. Once it's burnt out, they just can't even go to you know clean up their thing and she this girl really wanted to commit suicide, you know, that was that level she went in for. Then we could we gave her a hope, hope that we could we will try our best and we've done this is about uh, maybe 15 years back we did it and uh, see fused hip, fused knee joint, but gave a joint, this are all unsymmetric we have done, so that it lasts for as long as possible. If you put a cement, it can loosen after 20 years. Unsymmetric can go on for 40, 50 years. So now she's able to stand, walk, everything she's able to. She went to college, completed, she got married, she's living a normal life. That's what counts. I mean, the quality of life is more important than just getting it done. Now we do even shoulder, fingers, every joint is replaceable and we get a time very good results. The best part is we get the best result is hip. Obviously it's a bottle socket. So you can even sit on the floor, do whatever you want. So is the knee joint. You know, we get excellent results with the knee joint. But slightly better, I mean lower thing in the uh, elbow and uh, elbow is also very good, but ankle and the uh, shoulder are slightly uh, not that up to up to 80% we can get it. So just to show a few of these quickly, even in the osteoarthritis, we saw the rheumatoid which are all very badly damaging all the joints, but in osteoarthritis it will damage just the knee joints or the hip joints like that. And here we do use sometimes the computer which was a modern thing, but I didn't believe in that. I just thought what it is I want to know whatever modern comes. I was using the computer for a few cases, about 70 of them, but I didn't find any different than what I could do it without using it. And it takes little more time, maybe another 20 minutes extra, but I didn't find any advantage, so we dropped it. But uh, the joint replacement of hip, you can do it in any case, you know, whether the or a dwarf, there are instruments, I mean, there are uh, special implants available for this boy. He is just a spawn, you know, three feet tall. And similarly, and closing spawn like this, we can do all this unsymmetric uh, thing, and he can go back to any kind of work after that. This lady, I mean, she's a yoga teacher, broke her hip, and she had arthritis, which was done with a cemented one because she's 80 plus. But you can imagine, see, I mean, nobody will believe when we say hip replacement, we allow them to do, sit and do yoga. They will not believe me. You know, even when they put it up in the orthopedic department, they say, you're teaching wrong. I said, no. I mean, if you do it correctly, and then why would you not do it? Give them the best thing what they want. She's a yoga teacher and tell her not to do yoga. It's not a thing. And she, it will last for another easily 10, 15 years till she's 95 to 100. So no problem at all with that. Now, coming to last key bone surgeries, um, we have quite a few are uh, there with the hip and knee and shoulders. Commonest we do is the shoulder and the knee surgeries. We use now population and uh, well, we use now a lot of uh, this uh, harvesting of the cartilage and replace that arthritis so we can avoid joints uh, replacement um, with uh, you know avoiding that the joint replacement and with stem cell and the harvesting cartilage is good. And we got a better joints now with the oxygenium, which is a better material, which will last, as I told you, this kind of a thing. It's a oxidized zirconium, and this adds, and it doesn't scratch proof, so it will last for 50, 60 years. So, coming to finally, that uh, bit of preventive osteoporosis is very, very important. This is, I want to tell you all about uh, osteoporosis.
osteoporosis, I think we should treat everybody who comes with aches and pains in the body is nothing. They have got a chill, you know, they keep saying that is only osteoporosis. If you see their vitamin D will be very low and uh, so if we treat them with tenipalatine injection, scissors, I mean that uh, what we call is a parenteral, that is scissors called ramulares, with along with calcium and vitamin D3, they do wonders. We started on that on a more than 1000 patients now. They have all done extremely well. Please kindly go through that. Teriparatide injection if it is severe osteoporosis. Otherwise, you can give them the paradigm, which is cystic quadrangularis with uh, calcium and vitamin D3. And uh, these people do extremely well when we treat with them. And uh, what I want to tell another important <coughs> point about that uh, uh, stem cell and another thing is that. It is still, we have done a lot of cases, but I didn't purposely bring it here is because it is in the initial stage now. You know, we are doing a lot of research on that and uh, very good results have come with just PRP and uh, stem cell. The PRP can be injected, even GPs, every general practitioner can do it. They can take the, spin it, take the blood, spin it and get the PRP off and they inject wherever they have the maximum tenderness. So if you have fibrofasciitis, calcaneal spur, or tennis elbow, it does wonders. There's no complication, there's no side effect, everybody can practice. And you will see the results are really amazing. After that they will not have any problem, no need to do any surgical intervention in these people. And final one word about vitamin D3. It is shown that vitamin D3 low level in India is not because of, you know, we have sunlight, we are dark skin. But why it happens is, our college guys, it happened that I am sure you all did it. In the AFMC, they have done it, uh, research. It is because of RO water. RO water, we all drink mineral water. It removes all the minerals and the water is useless, you know. That is how we all became deficient to vitamin D3. It's the only cause. It's been proven now, just as a knowledge. Thank you very much. Please come and hand over the second year physician to Nandak Masakas. 